Okay, so I am choosing to talk about the Kathy Acker piece. And the text as a whole didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but um, there was one sentence that stood out to me largely because it did make sense. And it was about a third of the way through the text. Um, it was just a single sentence by itself, no paragraph. Um, it was in italics and it said, human desire creates a story. So that got me thinking about how it's largely the prince's desires and wants that make this story. And those desires and wants um, are usually categorized either as sexual or non-sexual. And usually the sexual ones are characterized by the word desire with like within the sentence and the non-sexual ones by the word want. So, but in the beginning of the story, it's more so desire and sexual. And like he goes on to say later on, like as he's getting older and his sexual desire is decreasing, that's more when the wants start coming in. But at the beginning, it says the um, the prince's desire for the mayor's daughter is making him marry his elegant nephew to her. And that in and of itself sort of creates the central problem or the prince's pain, as he calls it, of him not being able to have her, even though she is right there and his nephew's fiance, like the, he still cannot have her. Um, and he continues to desire her, even though there is at one point, he says, and I quote, <clears throat> this is no fucking way to live and I won't stand for it. But he does stand for it at some points. And then there, um, after that, when he's talking about the rooms to himself, at least, the first room, it has the quote, sexual desire numbs, sexual desire stops, which I thought was kind of interesting. And then in the second room, it said, I've got to talk, I've got to tell you sexual desires making this world impossible, which once again, loops back around to um, his desire for the mayor's daughter making his life difficult. But like I said, as he gets older and he doesn't desire her quite as much, he says more things with the word want. Like, I want an intelligent friend. I want some real coffee. I don't want to go into the other room. And there is also a point where he says, um, fleeing makes me want to die. And I thought that part was interesting because he only ever said that something want, made him want to die or didn't want to die after the point where he decides to die, which that in and of itself I thought was interesting. But it it did take him a while to ever say like, I want to die or I don't want to die. And as he's um, in the hospital near nearing the end of the story where he says fleeing makes me want to die, he also says, at least I want a glass of champagne. And it's at that point where the words want and desire and the connotations of each start to get a little mixed up and flip-flopped. Like he says, I want booze, drugs, orgasms, sexual dramas, conniving slaughters, the greeds of politicians, pre-adolescents giggling in the snow. That chunk as a whole was him sort of wanting all of this upon his death but it was sexual in nature even though he did say the word want in the beginning of it but despite all of this and because that is one of the last times he says want in the story what came after that is 
what I wanted most was love. What I want most now, even as I'm dying, is love, though the sexual component has disappeared. So I think that the prince's desires of sex and non-sexual things are what kind of overwhelmingly frame the story as it is.